Hi book friends, I'm Erin and this is Erin Go Read. Today I have a book haul including some book mail. So I was planning on filming this when I got home today anyway and then I was hoping that this book depository order had made it and it has. So I need scissors to get into this. So these are books that I have ordered and purchased since about mid-January. So what do we have here? So I have a couple collections that I like. Ooh, this is Beloved. So this is the Vintage Red Spine edition of Beloved. I have an old battered copy that I got for like $2 at a local used bookstore, which is great. It got me through my first reading of Beloved, but I really hated the cover. And so I'm happy to have, uh, in addition to the book, the Vintage Red Spine collection and a beautiful copy of this amazing book. Okay, there might be more than one in this guy. So some of these were purchased, um, there was a, some sort of sale or, you know, 15% off or something like that after Christmas. And then, um, I'm not sure if it was thrift books or book depository that for my birthday, which is at the end of November in like that, like the end of December, I got some sort of coupon from them for my birthday. Okay. So we have some more, uh, vintage red spines. And we have Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest. And that's a really cool cover. So as far as I understand, all of the vintage red spines have, each author has one artist that does all of that artist's covers. So any Oscar Wilde book in a vintage red spine will have this artist. Does it say? Um, Adam Hanchner. Hancher. Adam Hancher did the cover art for this one. So, oh, The Important of Being Earnest and Other Place. So I do have a collection of vintage red spines. It's, um, I like collecting classics and modern classics in certain editions. So they just, they're all in one spot on the bookshelf and they look nice and tidy and um, just, it makes me happy. And we have 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne, and that is a vintage red spine as well. And so here we have completely different color art. Um, so all the Jules Verne will have cover art by Jimmy Tierney. Cool. And see, as they're stacking up here, they look so nice and they're all red. The collection of them on my shelf are like way up there. You can't, can't see them and it's, Book Depository typically will give you a uh, um, bookmark in the package. So that's for Fantastic Beasts. This is a big guy. I had to use tape on this one. Ooh, there's lots in here. So I did have, I had a couple of pre-orders of books uh, that came out like end of February, early March, I guess end of February. And then these orders, and I don't think I have any more outstanding orders. So hopefully I'm gonna be done for a little while. We'll see how long this keeps me satisfied, right? Um, this, the squirrels who squabbled, I don't really know what that is about, but it's cute, whatever that bookmark is for. All right, we have Stoner by, is it John Williams? Yeah, John Williams. Um, Russell at Ink, or, Ink and Paper Blog really likes this book in John Williams. And so I thought I would give, um, I would give that a shot. And again, it's another red spine to add to the collection. These are all red spines. Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. And uh, Kate Howe is a big fan 
of this one. So I will probably save this one for Victober, which Kate Howe typically um, hosts or co-hosts. And we have The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne and a vintage red spine. Ooh, and North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Ooh, this is a pretty cover. And the vintage red spine. So I read, uh, I read Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. I have that in the English Library, English Library Classics edition. And I watched the BBC adaptation of North and South last Victober. So it'll be fun to, um, to pick this one up to read. So, yay. So those were all red spines. So that was, um, and I'm thinking that the, maybe the vintage red spines had all been like on sale or something. Uh, when you buy from Book Depository, it's kind of like when you buy from Amazon, how it'll have like the list price and then what they're selling it for. And um, so you can see like, you know, 20, you're saving 23% or 10% or whatever it is. So maybe there was a sale going on there and I, hopefully there was a sale going on and I jumped on that. Okay, then I have a couple stacks here of books just that I acquired either through Thrift Books or bookdepository.com in the last month and a half or so, or I definitely had a bit of a haul at uh, my local half price books, which is a great place to buy, especially like new paperbacks. Um, uh, what's it called? Classics, used books. Of course, they're typically in pretty good condition and they have a really good selection. Uh, at least my store does. And um, yeah, I don't think any of this is from Barnes and Noble. Uh, I have to keep me, I have to keep myself away from Barnes and Noble unless I really want a brand new release and I can use my membership discount to get, uh, sometimes it's 30% off. Um, anyway. All right. First four here are going to be part of the Great American Read, uh, adding to that collection. So I have Catcher in the Rye and this is number 30 on the Great American Read list. I read this in high school. I reread this when I was probably around... 20, I want to say, and I remember appreciating it more when I read it the second time and thinking that the reason I didn't like Holden Caulfield as a character when I was in high school is because I was too similar to him. So it'll be interesting to read it 15 years later now from that second reading, how I feel about it. Uh, next up is Foundation by Isaac Asimov, and this is a really cool cover. This is from Harper Voyager, and this is um, this one's published in the UK. So this one was definitely a bookdepository.com purchase. So this is a sci-fi uh, classic, basically. I don't really know anything about it, um, but it's on the Great American Read list. And part of the purpose of doing this Great American Read project, where I read through the 100 books on that list, is that I introduce myself to authors that I wouldn't have typically read, um, I expect that I'm not going to like all 100 of these books, but um, I am free to DNF, but I want to at least give them a shot, and I have no reason to think that I won't really enjoy this one. All right, next up, number seven on the Great American Read list is Charlotte's Web, and at, at, book Depo or at, um, at Half Price Book, I happen to find this really nice, I think it's an anniversary edition, 60th anniversary edition, that's my dog down here even some love and it's hardback. So this is a really nice edition and there's some illustrations in there. We have the, the titular Charlotte's Web right there. And then a book I'm definitely intimidated by, Don Quixote is number 78 on the list. And uh, this guy is pretty hefty, but this is a really cool edition and this is the Edith Grossman translation. Okay, so this first book out of the pile that I already had, I got from a one of those free little libraries that you find uh, around town, and this is a really cool find. So this is Barracoon by Zora Neale Hurston, 
And this is a new book. Now, Zora Neale Hurston died in 1960. So I don't exactly know how, where this came from, who compiled these writings. It didn't, it didn't say on the, on the inner jacket, um, but she was a, like a cultural anthropologist. And so she goes and this, this book is her account of time that she spent with this man Cujo, who was the last African traded, um, brought over from Africa in the slave trade. And I think after it had been made illegal, actually. And so she spent like three months um, just hanging out with him, basically, and uh, getting to know each other and finding out more about his story. And this is her writing of that. So this was super cool, free find. Check out those little free, free libraries um, around town. You can even go, if you go to, and I can never remember, is it Little Free Library or Free Little Library? Whatever, Google it and you can find, there's like a, there'll be a map and you put in your zip code or whatever and you can find all the ones around you. So I have a handful that I know where they are and that I'll stop by regularly and as I um, you know, have books that I wanna get rid of, I'll kinda keep a stack going and so I have one to, to replace in and out as, um, as I find some good, uh, some good gems. Um, next up, this was a half price books one for sure. This is the 100 year old man who climbed out the window and disappeared by Jonas, Jonasson? Yeah. And he, there's a new book out and that's, I, that's what made me aware of this one. And um, I really like Frederick Bachman's A Man Called Uva. Um, I, think I, like, I think I like old person, elderly fic, if that's a thing. And so I wanna give this one a shot. I'd heard some good things about this one and I found it at a good price at Half Price Books. Um, next up, this is a book of short stories from Christopher Paolini, The Fork, The Witch, and The Worm. And Christopher Paolini is the author of The Inheritance Cycle or the Aragon books, which I have really enjoyed. And so these are like short story, like um, magical tales from around Allegasia. Allegasia is the world in which um, Aragon exists in. So I'm excited for that one. I've already read this, um, but I didn't have a physical copy because I listened to the audiobook, and that is Handmaid's Tale, and I just like this cover quite a bit. Next up is Sally Rooney's Conversation with Friends. Um, I think this is a UK edition, and you can kind of tell even by the, um, like it's not floppy. I can, I can feel when it's a UK edition. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really liked Normal People, which is currently nominated on, it's on the long list for the Women's Prize. So, um, I'll give this other one a shot. Uh, another, uh, other than the Vintage Red Spines, I also collect the Penguin Modern Classic, um, editions. And here is, uh, The Great Gatsby. I have another edition of it. It's a kind of a beat up older edition and... I never find a good looking edition of The Great Gatsby and it's already a book that I struggle with. I am going to reread it for The Great American Read. Um, but I, so, because I'm rereading it, I don't really like the book that much. I, I wanna give it a good shot. And so I thought, well, maybe if I have like a nicer edition of it and it can it can be added to my current collection of Penguish, Penguin English Library editions. So some of them have the, like the light blue spine like this and some of them just have a white spine. So I wonder if there's a reason for whether they have blue or white. I don't know. Um, next up, just a book that I've heard about and haven't read is Oliver Sacks' The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. And I believe, I'm interested in this one because I believe there's a, like a neurological disorder um, or a brain tumor or something at the heart of, of the issue. Um, I could be completely wrong on that. And I just thought this was a really cool edition. If you can see that very well, it's a Picador classic. This was another book depository.com and I'm pretty sure this one is a, is a English, a UK edition. Picador classic, London, yeah. You can feel, and you can feel it. It's, they're, they're, they're thicker 
um, feeling. They are not floppy like American um, paperbacks are. Um, one that I've heard a lot from a lot of booktubers is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. And this is like a, a dystopian, I think. Um, George R. R. Martin says, beautifully written and wonderfully elegic. A book that I will no long, I, a book that I will long remember. Elegic? E-L-E-G-I-A-C. I'll have to look that book up. Um, visually stunning, dreamily atmospheric, and impressively gripping, says The Guardian. So, um, who cares what they say? I've heard a lot of booktubers that I, um, that I really enjoy have really liked this one. And that's a cool cover. There's like the, the city and then the, the deer right, right there. My dog wants to play. Okay. Another darling of booktube is, if I can grab it, Becky Chambers, A Long, a long Way to a Small Angry Planet. I'm seeing a bit of a, a bit of a sci-fi dystopian theme here in this haul. Interesting. So anyway, there's that one. And I have kind of a ugly copy of uh, book three in the Fl Flavia de Luce uh, Mysteries by Alan Bradley. This one is Speaking from Among the Bones. So this is a paperback. They have these really cool, um, let me grab one. They're these really nice naked hardbacks and I've been having a hard time getting a hold of them. So that red one was book four. This is book three. I've read the first two. So now I have the, the bridge. I couldn't go on with the series until I got this one. So now I have it. Next up is the only classic that I can remember that I read as a kid, I guess I, I read Charlotte's Web as a kid, but I remember really enjoying The Secret Garden. And I found this, um, it's like the chalk, what's this called? Like the chalkboard chalk it's from Penguin. Penguin Threads, that's what it's called. Edition and there's the girl on the back. I think this has French flaps, yeah. We have French flaps. And end papers there with a secret garden and deckled edges. So that's a beautiful, beautiful copy. I think that my niece Holly would probably really enjoy reading this one. So Holly, when you're ready, I have this one for you to borrow. Um, so I just read. Ooh, what did I read this in? Oh, in Americana. Um, Graham Greene, the author, is brought up several times in conversation, and particularly the book, The Heart of the Matter. So I picked that up, and uh, this is another Penguin. Uh, this is the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition, and this is another one with French flaps and deckled edges. So, yeah. Goodness. So those are all the ones that I have bought um, in person or had ordered. And then I just recently became a galley member of Grey Wolf Press. They are, I believe, I'm pretty sure they're local to me, Northern California. I hear a lot from Russell over at Ink and Paper blog, um, uh, about them. He gets, he gets a lot of stuff from them. And this is Machine by Susan Steinberg. And this is a galley copy. So this doesn't come out until August 2019. Um, so it says, Machine revolves around a group of teenagers, both locals and wealthy out-of-towners, during a single summer at the shore. After a local girl drowns, the narrator tries to piece together what happened and struggles to find mooring in the aftermath. In formally daring prose, Steinberg captures the violence of desire and its reverberations. The restless rhythm of the novel propels a sharply drawn narrative that ferociously interrogates gender, class, privilege, and the disintegration of identity in the shadow of trauma. Machine is the kind of novel, relentless and bold, that only Susan Steinberg could have written. And Susan Steinberg has written uh, Spectacle, Hydroplane, and The End of Free Love. So, yeah, that should be interesting. 
And now I just have some nonfiction. A couple of these are borrowed. The rest of these are, you know, I purchased myself. The first one I'm reading right now, this is Deep Work by Cal Newport. And I'm actually just happened to be listening to a podcast episode um, just yesterday on the Jordan Harbinger show. Great podcast, the Jordan Harbinger, the Jordan Harbinger show. Check him out. Cal Newport was a recent guest and it's all about um, deep work, um, getting deep into tasks free of distractions and how even when we think we're really concentrating on things, our basically our modern environment, um, we're constantly being distracted and there's residue from every time you check that email or you check that notification. When you go back to your work, you have this residue of that last thing in your head um, and it takes away from your overall um, efficiency and the, and the depth and quality of the work that you could be achieving. So I'm enjoying this. The next two are, these are the borrow. These are from my husband's speech therapist. This is Atul Gawan's Being Mortal. And is this the one, he's a doctor, he's a surgeon and it's like stories, stories of, of life and death basically and, and what, it, what it means to be mortal, I suppose. Next one is Do No Harm by Henry, Mar Henry Marsh. Uh, this is also from, um, borrowed from my husband's speech therapist and um, he's talking about being a brain surgeon and um, uh, I don't know a whole lot else, so I'm interested to get to that one. Next one is another kind of productivity, um, productivity work-related book, and this is Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Oh, one of my favorite book depository bookmarks there is the, the Hugga bookmark. I have a few of those. Um, this book I actually have already read. I listened to the audio audiobook of The Power of Habit around a year ago or so by Charles Duhigg, and I really enjoyed it, and I always wanted to pick up a physical copy, and I happened to catch it, um, like, on sale. Um, and now I have a copy, and I plan to use this more for myself and also for my clients as I, um, as I work with health coaching clients. And the last one I have, um, I heard this author on, I can't remember what podcast now that it was. Heard it on a podcast, Vani Hari, Feeding You Lies, How to Unravel the Food Industry's Playbook and Reclaim Your Health. And she has a website called foodbabe.com. So there's that. She was really interesting on the podcast. I wish I could remember what podcast. Oh, I know. It was the Model Health Show with Sean Stevenson. Also another great podcast to listen to, and she was great on the podcast. So that is it for my enormous book haul. I believe my book buying has simmered down quite a bit. Um, I have plenty of books, obviously, to get on with now. So there's no way I'm going to be able to hold up all of these books. Just pretend eh, that is my book haul. Are you interested in any of these books? Have you read any of these books? If you're interested in finding more about The Great American Read, I have a previous video where I explain what it is and what I'm doing with it. I think I'm going to be doing some sort of TBR jar kind of thing related to the PBS Great American Read project I have going on. So look out for that. Thank you for watching. See you around the tubes.